Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me and today we're discussing a very important organ of the posterior abdominal wall known as the kidney do not forget to subscribe to my channel i make anatomy a living piece of cake and you have to trust me on that turn your post notifications on and let's get right into the video posterior abdominal wall so up to now we've been talking about organs that were basically floating mid air in the abdomen you know like were lying wherever they wanted to lie but the kidneys however these poor little organs did not have that option unfortunately and they were stuck to the posterior abdominal wall because of that they were not covered by peritoneum any organ that is lying in close proximity to the posterior abdominal wall is usually retroperitoneal and i've discussed that in my peritoneum video go check that out so these organs are basically going to be cl closely lying to the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall so let me just tell you this that in the posterior most abdominal wall you'll have the important structures number one the kidneys the posterior abdominal wall muscles the inferior vena cava and aorta are also going to be pushed to the posterior abdominal wall all right this is the right side and this is the left side i want you to remember this cafe that i've made which i actually own i'm not even kidding i have this cafe known as la rive and i want you all to come and look at that cafe because on the menu we have the kidneys the la rive cafe basically is about the la rive i want you to remember for this for the rest of your life guys because this is going to help you a lot on the left side there is the aorta and on the right side there is the inferior vena cava remember that forever and these two large vessels are closely attached to your posterior abdominal wall so on the right side we have what inferior vena cava and on the left side we have the aorta so this is the aorta and this is the inferior vena cava whenever we talk about the kidneys you're probably like where do i get started all you have to do is remember that the kidneys basically lie in your right and left lumbar regions they also somewhat extend to the epigastrium to the mycal region and to even the right hypocondrium in case of right kidney they're basically their long axis is directed a little bit obliquely therefore they come to lie in the epigastrium as well however their main site of being is in the lumbar region so remember that on the middle side of the kidney there is going to be this thing called the hilum and we all know that the hilum is basically part of that organ which allows important structures to enter and leave the organ in case of liver it was the porta hepatis in case of spleen and kidney it's the hilum the hilum from posterior to anteriorly contains what it contains coming from posterior to anterior we have the vein first the renal vein the renal artery and then we have the pp stands for the renal pelvis all right renal pelvis is basically beginning of ureter and what is ureter that long tube that comes out of the kidney that delivers the urine from the kidney to the bladder right that guy right there is the ureter and it begins from a renal pelvis so upper expanded portion of the ureter is the renal pelvis now let's just discuss the basic structure of the kidney the kidney basically consists of two poles the upper and lower now remember this in the upper pole of the kidney there is this triangular gland that lies in both kidneys known as the suprarenal gland we know upper part has a suprarenal gland and lower border is just pointed medial border contains what i just talked about it contains the hilum with all those important structures and the lateral border is convex the kidney has an anterior and a posterior surface anterior is quite uh, irregular posterior surface is flat now we have a brief outline of what the kidney is it's an excretory organ located in the lumbar region it lies in the posterior abdominal wall i also want you to remember that the right kidney is lying a little lower than the left kidney and that is because of the liver the organ liver which has caused the diaphragm right dome to also be raised above it also causes your kidney to go a little lower so among all of your organs you can say that the liver is the meanest of all the liver is like where i go you guys got to move it and make space for me so right kidney goes a little bit down the diaphragm goes a little bit up because it starts occupying so much space the reason of me telling you this is because the relations of the right and left kidney will differ because of this little factor what exam questions will be made of regarding your kidney first question will be what are the relations of the kidneys when asked about the relations i want you guys to remember to organize the relations in this manner there's going to be a superior relation a superior relation is what it's quite easy it's the suprarenal gland so even if you don't feel like studying much at least you'll know superiorly is the suprarenal gland on the medial border some part of the suprarenal gland and the hilum of the kidney with all those structures that i talked about they are going to be existing on the medial border of the kidney anterior and posterior surface Let's talk about the posterior relations of the kidneys first and this is a very important question they might just ask you about the posterior relations but guess what it's your lucky day you've stepped into this video you're going to know stuff that nobody else will know let's talk about the posterior relations 
before i talk about the posterior relations i just want you to know that the posterior abdominal wall muscles go like this medial most muscle is the psoas major muscle then we have the quadratus lumborum from below comes your iliacus a more laterally if you would like to go more laterally you will remember that the transversus abdominis the muscle of the anterolateral abdominal wall was taking origin from this area all right that's a little bit of uh, outline that you need to understand this is the right kidney and this is the left kidney now i want you to divide the kidney into two parts an upper part and lower part the lower part should be divided into three segments these are the muscles all right the muscle on the upper part of both of the kidneys will be which muscle that is coming from the thorax that is the diaphragm makes complete sense we all know that the diaphragm has ligaments medial side has a medial arcuate ligament and lateral side has a lateral arcuate ligament now tell me about the muscles that are going to come from medial to lateral side all you're going to do is you're going to talk about your prime minister who's a big cutie okay that was kind of awkward but trust me it makes sense prime minister is a q and t what muscles lie from medial to lateral the psoas major the quadratus lumborum and finally the transversus abdominis you know the ribs are also going to come into relation with the two kidneys since right kidney is a little bit lower it will only have relation with the 12th rib which is the floating rib but the left however will also include the relation of the 11th rib and that is because it's higher what vessel or nerve would come just below the 12th rib it is going to be the subcostal vessel and the subcostal nerve so subcostal vessel and nerves are passing over here this is the t12 nerve with the vessels after the t12 is the l1 right so the l1 nerve root belongs to which nerves it is the ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal nerve if you study the lumbar plexus this is not going to be difficult at all so these are the relations of the posterior side of the kidney i hope you have them on your fingertips they're quite simple now the stuff will get tricky Let's talk about the anterior relations of both right and left kidney. I'd like you to recall the organs, all right? Because uh, kidneys are lying on the posterior abdominal wall, so all those organs that were just floating mid abdomen, I want you to remember them. Where was the liver? The liver was in the right hypochondrium. The spleen was probably in the left hypochondrium. I assume it was in the left hypochondrium. Makes complete sense. So tell me where the pancreas was. I know this about the pancreas. I was going towards the spleen, so it has to be somewhat over here. And where was the stomach lying? I'm sure the stomach is definitely above the pancreas. I'm sure of that. So there goes your stomach. And from the stomach emerge your duodenum. The duodenum goes like this because it has like these parts. It has first, second, and then the third part. And then came the jejunum. The jejunum just went like crazy. Finally, the colon would just like come and be like, listen, guys, I don't want no baggage. Let me just pass by. It went like that. That makes complete sense. What I formed here is a picture that you're probably like, that is just scribbling. But guys, this is actually the masterpiece that's going to help you out. So in the right kidney and the left kidney, the relations will differ because the organs placed in the abdomen have a different placement. So in the right kidney, the biggest impression that we'll see will be of the liver. Therefore, this is known as the hepatic area. In the medial border of this kidney, you can see like that. What is this coming from the stomach? It is the duodenum. So this is the duodenal area. You see, we can see this tiny part being consumed by the jejunum. So this is your jejunal area. This is that colon, the sending colon, and then like it goes close to the liver, it forms the hepatic flexure. Basically, it is the colic impression right over here. And what lies above the kidney? Superior relation, this is going to be for the suprarenal gland. I mean, oh my God, all that scribbling, but it makes so much sense. Let's talk about the left kidney. Left kidney, once again, we have the suprarenal gland impression right here on the superior part. Leave that out of the way. What we do know is that leftmost will be our spleen in the left hypochondrium. So that is splenic area or splenic impression. And anteriorly, you'll see this tiny area for the stomach. And then it becomes duodenum, we all know. So this is the gastric area. And then we know that the pancreas is also forming an impression. Pancreas is like, hello, give me some importance here. So we have this pancreatic impression. The jejunal impression is going to be large in the case of the left kidney because the jejunum is mostly occupying your left side. We have the colic impression. In the midst of all the scribbling, we are very confident with the relations of the kidney anteriorly. If we had to draw it on an empty slate, it won't be a problem this time. The right kidney superiorly has that suprarenal gland impression and then it had this huge hepatic area impression. On its medial side, C-shape, we had the duodenal impression. On the lateral side, we had the colic impression and finally we had the jejunal impression. So guys, I didn't need a book for that. I literally just drew that in front of you unless I edited out the segments where I took a peek into the book. Let's draw the left kidney. 
the left kidney once again suprarenal gland then i remember there was a splenic area trust me this is uncut footage gastric area and i believe the pancreatic impression would come like that the jejunum would occupy most of the area and then the colic impression so now i know that this is quite simple and i didn't need to cut that i didn't need to edit anything out because i memorized it from all that scribbling and i'm sure you did too so if you're asked in the examination draw the relations of the kidney do not forget to draw the superior medial anterior and posterior relations however sometimes they'll just be specific and ask you to draw just the anterior or just the posterior relations so overall you know the relations of the kidney let's talk about the layering of the kidney first there is a fibrous capsule then comes a layer of adipose tissue known as the perinephric fat after which there is the renal fascia a fascia of a lot of importance after which you'll see paranephric fat now what's important in these coverings is actually your renal fascia where does it extend how does it extend how is it attached that's something you need to know all i want you to do is simplify it how do you simplify it write down superior medial posterior inferior once you're done writing this divide the renal fascia into an anterior and a posterior lamina anterior is known as garrota while the posterior is known as the sucker candle fascia they're divided got their fancy names let's talk about where they're gonna go and what they're gonna do right superiorly what do you think is gonna happen there's a super suprarenal gland right here so superiorly your renal fascia will enclose the suprarenal gland it continues as the diaphragmatic fascia so suprarenal gland done and becomes the diaphragmatic fascia or continues as the diaphragmatic fascia medially let's suppose we're gonna view this in cross section so these are the two kidneys there is a lumbar vertebra right over here so what happens is the anterior lamina is gonna go and continue with the fascia of the opposite kidney that is for the anterior lamina posterior lamina of both sides is just gonna go and get attached on either side of the vertebra they're just gonna get attached all right so now we know what's gonna happen medially posteriorly the muscles uh, the psoas major and the quadratus lumbar were lying posteriorly your fascia will just blend with the fascia of the swas major and the quadratus lumborum that was pretty simple right and finally inferiorly it continues as the fascia covering the iliacus muscle known as the fascia iliaca now all you need to know is this divide the renal fascia into anterior posterior lamina superiorly go take it to the suprarenal gland take it to the diaphragm go to the medial side medially divide anterior goes into the other kidney posterior gets stuck to either side of the vertebra that makes so much sense then posteriorly this fascia is going to blend with what the fascias of the quadratus lumborum swas major how easy is that inferiorly it will just go blend with the fascia iliaca so basically overall your body is connected to each other all those regions with the fascias this fascia is continuous layer when it's under the diaphragm it's a diaphragmatic fascia when it's over the kidney it's renal fascia so it's all about the continuations that's what we learn in the renal fascia the blood supply of the kidneys from the renal arteries the renal arteries basically going to divide and branch into segmental arteries which is going to branch into lobar arteries then interlobar then arcuate artery then interlobular arteries which are going to go eventually become the efferent arterioles and enter your glomerulus right the peritubular plexus it's going to go back in reverse direction same names the interlobular then arcuate then interlobar lobar segmental finally renal vein which enters into the inferior vena cava and just like that you're done with the kidneys now that topic that seemed like a headache has become a pill to remove the headache so anyway guys thank you so much for watching really hope you understood the kidneys well see you in my next video where we talk about the ureters until then thank you so much for watching